So forget about whether the NSA has called for the full implementation of the Cyber Crime Act. The police can lay their hands on any laws to prosecute anybody. And mind you, the fact that somebody is a journalist doesn't mean he has immunity against certain things. You are criminally liable once an offense has been laid against you. And the police has the duty to take it up. All Nigerians, they have their fundamental human rights and need to enjoy their fundamental human rights. We have cases that people have been raising allegations against the police on this issue of implementation of Cyber Crime Act uh, 2024 as amended. I, let me put it on record that if you, a petition has been written against you as a journalist, I think the best thing you should do as a trained journalist, a certified journalist, is to honor that invitation and get across to the office of the first bureau. None of them that have been victimized, quote and unquote, according to you, have not contact, contacted me. They will not. And I want us to get it clear that most of these people, everybody's a journalist, most of them will practice in journalism in Nigeria. But the fact is, we have not, the police has not arrested anybody from any mainstream media per se. Even if they invite you, people here can testify to it. They will reach out to me and I will call the IPO that was the matter. Nobody. But most of these bloggers that are coming up now, they always run foul of the law because they want to break the news. You can't break the news without confirming from the parties involved. And you need to balance your story. And once you are invited to come and clarify issues, don't run away from the police. We are human beings like you. We are complete homo sapiens sapiens like you. So come to us. We'll be able to assess this. And don't say uh, because they have been arrested, they, they were adopted. I, I disagreed and I challenged some platforms why you say security operators and get adopted journalists. They, they, we, we don't adopt. We arrest. And if the arrest is wrong, you tell us why the arrest is wrong. Then we tell you why the arrest is right. We, we, we face challenges because many um, of you don't really understand the legal framework. Where the law is applicable, if you are not aware, you pick an offense against us for enforcing the law. All enforcers, uh, law enforcers uh, in Nigeria are bound to experience all this. It's not only the police. So I want to clear this. I've clarified this that we are not obliged to even send invitation to any suspect in the first instance. It's just a mark of respect. We are sending to you. There's no law that says you must invite somebody before you carry on with your investigation. No. We can only honor you by saying, okay, let's extend the invitation to him. Let him come and explain. But where you don't honor invitation, we'll go to court and get a warrant. Once we have that warrant, we can even declare you wanted. That's the law. We can declare you wanted and you can arrest you anywhere. The only place you can arrest maybe you are in the hallowed chamber of the National Assembly or the House of Assembly, or you are in the church, you can still respect you that in the church. Anywhere you are, they can pick you. We don't adopt, we arrest. And once you're on bail, once you have been arrested, your statement um, is taken under caution. In the law, you are to be granted bail to a substantive surety. And that's another problem. You don't tell me your colleagues in your office will stand surety for you. No. If you are not a substantive surety, the police will not release you, uh, you any, anybody to you. We need to get it right. And once you're on bail and you jump bail again, the surety can be arrested to replace you or we still look for you by all means. So it, let us, uh, gentlemen of the press, it is not that we are applying cyber crime acts to witch hunt you, to harass you, to oppress you, or we don't want to support um, uh, freedom of the press in Nigeria. No, it is not so. Let us rather talk to ourselves, and we are thinking to have a joint, uh, a joint um, workshop so that we understand certain things. Where somebody is right, if you want to write, I'm not saying you should not be a whistleblower, but if you want to be a whistleblower, you must get your fact right. And where we are investigating, we have stumbled on certain contents on your phone that you are demanding for ransom that if you don't want me to publish, pay me one million euro. That is not a journalist. That is not journalism. So let us get it right. If you want clarification, we are going to give you information on certain things. On, but when we get to the bridge, we shall cross the bridge. But there are so many things we are still keeping now. We don't want to be parading certain journalists. But we have seen, have stumbled, and we've covered content, enticing content, that some of them are demanding for ransom. If you don't want me to publish, give me so-so million umbrella. And those big ones that you think they are big, it's going to surprise you by the time you want to expose their deals. That is just it, and get it right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, by the side, say something about the situation in the FCT. 
and they need to strengthen what the first PRO has said. If they said a madman said he won't say anything until he looks for his head and he does not see it, we can't stay and wait until our heads are pulled over our necks. If there is any information that any person should give about security and those who are behind the obnoxious acts in our various communities and the hinderlands, please, whether you are a journalist or any person for that matter, come forward and share your information with us. Come forward, wherever. DSS has offices in the 774 local governments in Nigeria and the 36 states and Abuja and FCT. Come forward or call me. And every day we um, check our uh, social media handles and uh, websites and emails. People give information. And uh, you can be one of those who can also bring in this information. You can direct your family members to us to share what you know. Because the criminals live among us. They are even the friends of some persons. So if your family member is behaving in a way that is antithetical to peace and public security or public order, you can also report him or her. And that way, we will jointly solve the problems of uh, insecurity. So do not shield yourself from responsibility or blame only to think that um, it's only security agencies that must fight crime. With the national security strategy, every person and every hand must be on deck. After all, every person who has a phone is now challenging traditional journalists. Every person now is a community journalist, publishes news of any kind, and uh, even establishes their own platforms and the handles and give news. So if your job is being taken over by every person, then in a way, you can also be part of security management and that way we have the harmony that we want. In Ogun State, it's very unfortunate that most times a journalist or some journalists will choose skilled news rather than factual news. And the difference in all of this, like I have always said in fora of this nature, forum of this nature, is that we do not cross-check our facts. Uh, let me make a comparison. If after this meeting, if after this meeting, you were going back to your offices and you were hit by a car, at uh, Tipa Garage, maybe you were going back to Kubwa and you were hit at Tipa Garage or even by Sahastos. Sahastos is close to this place. Would you say you were hit in the defense headquarters? You would not say that. But for mischief, it would rather make you pleasant to say it was when you were leaving the press conference that the DMO sent a car to hit you. And people will believe you. So, um, um, Fatai Ishiaka and uh, Samuel Oyero, about 14th or thereabout of May, were arrested in uh, Ogun State, in Elaro or so. There was a case in Agososo or Agosasa. Yes, those who know the place, uh, wanting uh, arson and all of that. And some persons were behind that. Over what? Chieftaincy Tuzzle. You know, the government uh, gave somebody a staff of office, one uh, Aziz Akimbelu, and uh, some persons uh, preferred uh, uh, Sunday uh, Abogurin, 
and uh, you know the camps were so you want us to cross our hands and uh, watch people destroy themselves and property so that we won't be blamed of arrest of people so they were yes people came to court and the people were arrested, but not in the court premises, not at all. It couldn't have been. But because some persons had control of the media, it was good for them to report it from a John Deist point of view, and they so did. But the DSS, over time, um, has shown um, good conduct and has also shown obvious respect for the judiciary. And the judicial officers can bear testimony to this. You can ask the hierarchy of the judiciary in Nigeria, or every wrong of the judiciary can testify to the harmonious relationship we have with them. Um, Daily uh, Trust wrote an um, editorial this morning that was uh, a scatting of the DSS. And, uh, I won't say we take exceptions to that, because it's your right to express your opinion the way you want, but at least we must continually discharge our responsibility with every sense of responsibility, patriotism, and love for the nation. Um, you mentioned several cases of uh, Emir Fele, Bawa, and some of these cases are subjudicial. And I won't sit down here to make comments on them for the reasons that, that they are in court. I'm surprised that the Daily Trust did not respect the sanctity of the court to come to cast SSS in the negative way that it did. But we have had a very wonderful relationship with the media. Uh, the DGSS is not someone who would uh, be in combat with men of uh, the media. We have never been, and we wouldn't want to be isolated cases, yes, but it's not institutional. So please, once there are things you need clarifications for, you cannot, my doors are open, my lines are open, the DG is open, the service is open. We have an interactive website. You can always uh, approach us to find out what, and we will always give you information once the, uh, info, uh, what you are seeking for is uh, relevant to national security management. So we didn't arrest uh, Fataya and uh, Oyewore, Oyewore in uh, the court premises, not at all. We did not and we couldn't have been. The presiding justice uh, for that matter was uh, Justice A. A. Um, uh, Shobayo in Elaro in the State High Court in Elaro. And uh, you could, any person in that court will bear witness that those two persons were never arrested in the court house. You know, if something happened in Area 8 um, or Area 7, and uh, you are arrested in another part of Area 8, that does not suggest <laughs> that you were arrested in the Army or Defense Headquarters. It was a misplaced news and the uh, daily trust, please, you may cross-check your facts. Thank you very much. The DSS respects the law. We engage in rule of law and uh, uh, our contributions to democratic growth in Nigeria is uh, uh, noticeable and uh, we'll continue to do that for the love of nation and citizens. Thank you very much. Because all along they have been putting him out of context. You know, it didn't, it didn't make a blanket, free range, unconditional statement that uh, if uh, Yabilo uh, is not arrested or anything like that, he will decide what he said. And I want it to be placed in proper perspective. He said that if Yabilo, if he was not arrested, then there will be no basis for him to go ahead, you know, to arrest or to arraign or to prosecute anybody. He was talking about the need to prosecute the IAB. And I think it is probably done that the EFCC is already in court. 
I mean, there is no basis for him to resign again because he said that if Yabelo was not prosecuted, he would resign. But Yabelo is already facing trial. I, I think we all know that by June 13, uh, June 13, 2024, there is another court appearance before Justice Ebeck and Inwiti of the Federal High Court. We are we expecting that he will make himself available. At the last court appearance, the judge was very, very angry that all along his cancer and all the people that are standing. Uh, that are holding brief for him, they have not rightly advised him. So the judge said that by June 13, 2024, if the Ayabelo you know, did not make himself available in court, the rightful judicial measure will be taken against him. So the EFCC chairman, he said that as a demonstration of his passion, commitment, sincerity in prosecuting whoever is involved in any economic crime. So he's in court. We are in court against him. His cases are coming. They are taking these charges, and so there is no basis for the FCC chairman to resign because the trial is on course. Now, concerning the issue of uh, what uh, Odita, uh, Odita said that uh, he said that uh, that I have not been uh, responding. Uh, I think it is an opportunity for us to understand the fact that, but for the activities of the EFCC, the situation of internet fraudsters will have terribly, terribly embarrass our nation. I'm sure we know that in the last one year, the EFC secured the provision of 3,412 and made the complaint of 161 billion naira in just one year. And I must place it on record that out of these 3,412 convictions, you know, that were made between May 29, 2023 and May 29, 2024, a large chunk of the convictions you know, came from internet fraudsters. There are these things we call business email compromise that is affecting businesses across the country. And internet fraudsters, they are all over the world trying to do this. Many of them are Nigerians. And our heat, we are running, we are making frantic and frenetic effort to ensure that all of these people, they are brought to trial. We work with all these international agencies, the FBI, Metropol, Scotland Yard and all of them to bring them to book. So what the royal said, I think you, you, we should rather commend the EFCC because the situation actually could have been worse. So internet fraudsters, those that are operating in Nigeria, those that are not operating in Nigeria, they are under the watch of the EFCC. Every day we make arrests, we go to court against them, and we are still going on. So, I think it is important for us to know that uh, the issue of uh, internet fraud uh, has almost become a pandemic. So, what the EFCC is doing is to save the situation. And we are saving the situation very, very creditably. So, it is not enough for anybody. He made an allegation that uh, internet fraud, they are doing it, they are doing that. But he didn't balance it with what, what is on ground to check their activities. So, the Commission is at work against them. And you know, many more. Uh, achievement is going to be recorded in that respect. Thank you very much. Okay.